The p-value is used for hypothesis testing to determine whether or not a difference between an observed result and the status quo is due to chance. When the p-value is being calculated, it is initially assumed that there is no true difference between the status quo and the observation. This is what we call the null hypothesis. A result is said to be statistically significant, or in other words, not due to chance, if the null hypothesis can be rejected. The null hypothesis can only be rejected if the p-value is less than or equal to the significance level. Therefore, the significance level has to be decided before the data is collected. The significance level is usually set as 5%, but can also be set as 1% or even 10%. The p-value for a normal distribution can be determined by calculating the z-score for a given event using the formula z-score equals sample mean minus mean of null hypothesis divided by the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. Then a z-score table can be used to find the associated probability of the event. Finally, we can compare the probability to the significance level to determine if the null hypothesis can be rejected. Let's use an example to demonstrate all of this in greater detail. The average weight of all residents in a small town is 85 kilos. A nutritionist believed that the true mean is different. She measured the weight of 36 individuals and found that the mean was actually 87 kilos, with a standard deviation of 6 kilograms. At a 95% confidence interval, is there enough evidence to discard the null hypothesis? In this case, the null hypothesis would state that the true mean is 85 kilo, which was the status quo before the nutritionist arrived. Then the alternative hypothesis is that the true mean is actually 87 kilograms. As the sample size is 36 individuals, which is more than 30, we can use the Z test instead of the T test. In this case, as we are dealing with a normal distribution, the confidence interval, or C, is the area in the middle of the curve. Therefore, the significance level, or alpha, exists in equal proportions on both sides of the curve. Therefore, the position of the Z-score has to fall outside of this confidence interval in order for us to reject the null hypothesis. In other words, the probability associated with the Z-score has to be less than 2.5%, or more than 97.5%. Now let's plug in the numbers into our formula and simplify. This gives us a z-score of 2.0. If we now pull up a z-score table, we find that the probability associated with 2.0 is 97.725. Remember, this shows us the area of the normal distribution to the left of the z-score, meaning that it includes all of this area. This is slightly more than 97.5%, meaning that we can reject the null hypothesis. In other words, the true mean of the weight of this town is indeed 87 kilograms and not 85 kilograms. If you want to learn more about statistics, check out this playlist.